So, hey everyone, uh, new chair. I thought it would give more of an ambiance when I fucking do this shit if I have a nice chair too. So, like all I need now is like a monocle and a fucking top hat and I could be the erudite reviewer. Maybe have a cane, have like a servant boy come in and I fucking savagely beat him. So, I'm just kind of buying time because M the Wolverine, it's okay. It really is. It's like fucking... This is probably just the biggest meh movie I've seen all summer. Like, it's... It's not even, like, fucking enough to, like, get me the rage on it. That should tell you fucking something about it. So, basically, story-wise, um... For, for those of you who want, like, a little synopsis, it's, it's fucking convoluted. Like, the story is very fucking just... I mean, to be fair, at least this one has a story, unlike Wolverine Origins. Get ready to see a lot of fucking comparisons to these two fucking movies. This movie is hands down fucking infinitely better than Wolverine Origins. And that's partly to do with the fact that Wolverine Origins is one of the worst fucking superhero movies ever fucking made. It really is fucking goddamn atrocious. So yeah, like, it just wins by not having magical memory bullets or fucking taking a character and completely ruining them. Although, to be fair, they did take characters and, well, Viper they kind of, like, that's the worst, that's really the worst fucking part. That's like the only thing I can get any ire up on this movie over is, is Viper. She, she sucked. And, I, like, I was kind of worried. And a lot of people were actually excited because Viper is a member of Hydra in the comic books. And she's she's one of the reasons that Wolverine fights Hydra from time to time because she's one of his big nemesis. So a lot of people were like, hmm, are they going to connect Hydra in this? Hmm. No. She's a doctor. She's, a, she's, a, she's the doctor to the guy who eventually becomes Silver Samurai. And she has a weird bug thing that she either injects Wolverine with or she has like some weird mist because like at one point she's over top of Wolverine and like mist is coming out of her mouth which makes no fucking sense because like it's like yeah like the the, the well-known fog machine snake we've all we all know about that that's like one of the th biggest things we know about snakes is one they fucking don't have legs and two they breathe vapors. And at one point, like, she has another power where it's, it's, it's just, like, kind of a lame knockoff of fucking Emma Frost from fucking X-Men First Class or from the comic books, Husk. She basically, she gets shot with an arrow and then she sheds her skin and it makes no fucking sense because, like, the layer of fucking skin she sheds and how deep the fucking arrow went, it's like... You'd have to fucking shed down to your goddamn skeleton. So she stinks. Then again, she's she's never really been the best Hydra commander. So like, I can't be like, ah, they ruined the fucking great Viper. Ah. No, it's just like, ah, they made a fucking lame character even lamer. <laughs> eh. It's not like fucking with Deadpool. No, 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 no. So like, there's, there's nothing. Well, there's something kind of on the level of Deadpool. Silver Samurai. So, it turns out, Silver Samurai is the old guy. We've seen him in the commercials. He's the old guy who Wolverine goes to visit in Japan because he's dying. Because that's one of the coolest things in the movie is the opening sequence is Wolverine and this dude are escaping the fucking atomic bombing of Nagasaki. That is fucking amazing. To be fair though, like the, the burn makeup was a little shitty. Or the burn CGI was a little fucking shitty. It's like, dude, like... Plus, since they made this a fucking direct sequel to X-Men 3, it's like, we've seen him fucking take the Phoenix Force full fucking blast. Like, that's really one of the fucking things in this movie that kind of really just kind of make me go, huh? Okay, big part is Viper gets this bug thing into Wolverine. He loses his healing factor because it's it's attached to his heart and shit. 
So, he has to cut himself open and remove it, and he dies. But then his healing factor kicks back in, and it kicks in more powerfully? Like, it's implied that it's more powerful now, and it's like, he withstood the fucking Phoenix Force! There's literally nothing fucking stronger than the fucking Phoenix Force. What the fuck? He, no! So that was kind of fucking just dumb and irritating. But back to Silver Samurai. So, to keep, uh, to keep fucking Silver Samurai alive until they can get Wolverine's healing factor, which... I mean, the, again, they should read the fucking comic books, whoever makes these fucking movies, because, like, the reason he wants it is he's dying from cancer. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, give give somebody a healing factor who has cancer. That's really fucking worked out well in the past, Deadpool. Like, why would you do that? Why isn't this Deadpool? Why could it Deadpool been to some guy with fucking cancer who fucking kidnaps Wolverine and they have to inject him with fucking Wolverine's healing factor and then he becomes Deadpool? Everybody's lovable fucking favorite mercenary with a mouth. Nope, he fucking has no mouth and he has giant fucking Baraka arms and fucking laser eyes and other stupid shit he never fucking had in the... Like, I, I fucking... <sighs> Silver Samurai is a cyborg, so there's that. It's kind of like, eh. Like, to be fair, though, I know a lot of people like Silver Samurai, so that might be a huge fucking point of contention for you in this movie if you are one of those people. But for me, he's always been one of those mutants who is like, I like having him in the background. Like, ah, oh, like, I like knowing Silver Samurai's out there bebop and doing shit. But, like, just, like, having shit focused on him, it's just, eh, I don't, you know. So, like, I didn't mind that. And they do some cool fucking things. Like, he, he he has his armors made out of animantium. And his sword is made out of animantium. He actually cuts off Wolverine's claws. So, that's how he loses the claws in this universe. And I'm willing to bet by the next movie, we will see the infamous Bone Claws. If you don't know what I'm talking about, believe me, they were fucking stupid. Like, how he got him was cool. It's like, wait a second, Magneto controls metal. Wolverine's skeleton is made of metal. So yeah, finally just Wolverine pisses off Magneto to the point where he's like, I'm fucking done playing around. And just yanks all the metal off of his fucking bones. It's a really fucking badass scene. So yeah, action-wise, there's a lot more action in this. But ugh, it's PG-13. It suffers the same fucking problems as... as World War Z had where it's like it is fucking goddamn clear there's going to be an R or unrated cut of this movie it really is it's just because in the movie Wolverine basically acts like Wolverine from the cartoons which is kind of funny because if this was a PG-13 cartoon then Wolverine would actually be allowed to use his claws on people that just shows you how fuck, like, how convoluted shit is. Like, oh, it's a fucking animation. Yeah, Wolverine can totally gut somebody with his fucking claws. No, 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 no. It's fucking, it's a live action. It's, you know, it's still basically a fucking cartoon because we got a guy with super mutant human powers fighting fucking ninjas and a fucking cyborg and a stupid fucking snake bitch. It's still a fucking cartoon, but no, we can't show any blood. So the whole fucking time... Wolverine is basically doing the shit he did in the 90s cartoon where he's just like I really hate doors bub and he's just like he really fucking hates doors in this movie He hates doors. He hates banisters. He hates tables uh, subway cars and Weapons He really hates weapons. He hates guns fucking he there's not a gun he meets in this movie He does not like cuz he fucking cuts all of them the pieces one thing uh, swords he can't, you know, like, for some fucking reason, it may be, like, maybe Silver Samurai's goons have fucking uh, animantium swords, too. But it's just like, why is the Wolverine's fucking claws cutting through the swords? That really bugs me. Like, that that's probably one of the parts that fucking really kind of bugged me. Is throughout the entire movie, Wolverine's having these flashbacks to Jean Grey. And he, he's like, I can't do it. I can't do anything again. I'm a murderer. 
I kill wherever I go. I can't do anything. So he's kind of having like that kind of fucking shit going on. While the whole fucking time he's fucking butchering people left and fucking right. So Wolverine, a conflicted person. But the way they end that thread of the movie is probably the biggest fucking cop out. Is after Wolverine, fuck, after they beat Silver Samurai and Viper, he sees one last flashback of, of Gene and he finally comes to fucking terms with fucking it. And it's like, gee, that would have fucking like actually meant something if that didn't come fucking literally in the last fucking five minutes of the movie. It's like, the, seriously, the next fucking scene after Wolverine's like, you know what, I will go on living and I will continue to try to be the hero that people thought I was. You know, blah, 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 that kind of fucking shit. And then he's in the airport, everybody's saying goodbye, all the new friends, and they're like, mm, we're gonna miss you. And then they fly off well, Wolverine flies off the fucking parts unknown. But wait! There's a fucking... There's a little clip after the fucking credits which have created some of a buzz. So, the credits end. Wolverine's back in the same airport two years later. And he sees a poster of the Sentinels. And up behind him comes Ian McKellen as Magneto. And Patrick Stewart as Professor X and they say some dark shit is coming and they are going to need his help and that's fucking it so it's leading into days of future past so a lot of people are kind of a titter with like wait a second Professor X was fucking dead in at the end of X-Men 3 he was fucking dead yeah his fucking consciousness was out there somewhere else but you know what? Like, consciousness is not the same as a physical fucking tangible body. Did he literally inject himself into another person and then that fucking person, like, he, he was like, I, I, I don't like how this person looks. I'm going to give them plastic surgery to look like me. What if he get, what if he, what if somehow his consciousness got into a woman's body? That would actually be kind of cool. <laughs> I'd watch that fucking movie. So, yeah, fucking Final Thoughts, it's, yeah, it's okay. I would honestly wait for the DVD. It's definitely better than Wolverine Origins, but on the same hand, it's nowhere near as good as any of the actual Marvel-made movies. It's just, it's like, uh Again, like, fucking... You know, at least with Fox this time, it's not a swing and a miss. It's a, it, they got a ball. Fox has a ball. So, like, to be fair, like, again, like, they, I really like First Class. I'm starting to think, though, First Class might have been a fluke. I really do think. I, and plus, my enjoyment of First Class has actually diminished since knowing First Class is actually being part of fucking Future Past because it's like, oh great, now fucking X-Men First Class is actually part of the shitty fucking X-Men continuity. Whoopee! See, that's the tangent. That is, unlike a lot of people, a lot of Marvel fanboys, I do not want Marvel gain back the rights to the X-Men. I don't. Unless, unless it's years and years and years down the road to the point where they're like, we have to reset our cinematic universe and start from scratch. That's the only way I want, because like, I do not want the fucking clusterfuck of continuity that comes with X-Men. Like, it's just, even in the comic books, like the, like the X-Men are just like, for the longest time, they're like their own even though they're in the Marvel Universe and they're a part of the bigger Marvel Universe, even in the comics, they've always been kind of doing their own thing. They always have their own little villains. They're not like, like, Avengers, like a couple of times, like at least the Avengers fight fucking Magneto. But like, so fucking few times that the event, like the X-Men fight like non-mutants who either, you know, don't want to fucking kill them or aren't like fucking military. 
Like, those are the only time they fight non-mutant humans. It's like, oh, they're fucking extreme racist fucking mutant-hating punks. Or, you know, they're just like military soldiers piloting giant sentinel robots. Or they're just mu mu uh, military police type people. So it's always like, like directly, every, yeah, every time they find somebody, it's always directly related to the fucking mutant shit. It's always mutant shit with the X-Men. I get that. I get it. But it's just like, as part of being a whole fucking continue, uh, a whole self-contained world, it just, it doesn't work for like a big universe. Like, and I just, I don't want that fucking, in, I don't want that fucking X-Men crap fucking up the purity of the Marvel movies. Like, Spider-Man, I can accept. Fantastic Four, I could accept. Even though it'd be kind of weird since Fantastic Four are usually always the first heroes in pretty much every continuity. Although that'd be kind of interesting to see how they do it if, like, they would have to, if they would reintroduce Fantastic Four now. That would be cool. I wonder how they do it. Anyways, I'm, I'm starting to fucking babble about comic books, so... Again, final thoughts, meh. 